I can't think of a better way to introduce this video than to just say it. Today we're going to photograph polar bears. In this video, we'll go behind the scenes of a wildlife expedition to photograph polar bears. We'll learn about wildlife photography techniques and how to shoot in cold temperatures. Drop any questions in the comments or reach out through my website, bdphotographs.com. All right, bundle up and let's find some bears. Welcome to Churchill, a small town in northern Canada nicknamed the polar bear capital of the world. No roads lead here, you have to arrive by airplane or a 50 hour train ride. You can also buy a snowmobile at the local grocery store. Every autumn, polar bears migrate from inland to the beaches near Churchill, waiting for the waters of Hudson Bay to freeze. Our opportunity happens in the days leading up to the freeze. Once the sea ice forms, the bears will travel many miles out onto the ice to hunt seals and eat throughout the winter. We're traveling along the tundra in a 4x4, tracking bears, and we've just found our first one. Most of the time, we'll be getting out of the vehicle to photograph the bears. We can do this safely, but only under the supervision of a guide and local bear expert. It's exciting to be out there, but we should take a moment to do some homework about our subject. Knowing an animal's behavior will help us to understand and anticipate what we see in the field, and that will help us get better images. The polar bear is the largest land-based predator on Earth. Polar bears are closely related to brown bears or grizzlies, though they have many differences. Unlike brown bears, polar bears are active year-round and do not hibernate. Adults can weigh over 1,500 pounds and stand nearly 10 feet tall on their hind legs. Males are usually larger than females and generally live solitary lives. Yawning is a sign of a stressed animal. In this case, the bear may be concerned about another nearby adult. A mother bear is always aware of her surroundings and wary of potential danger to her cubs. She seems completely unconcerned by our presence less than 100 feet away, but is definitely on high alert for male bears. Later on, we'll use our knowledge of bear behavior to capture some cool images. The most compelling wildlife shots are usually ones that show action. These two males are about to spar for dominance, so we need to be ready with our camera to capture an interesting highlight. This mother is looking around for danger. In a moment, she'll stand up for a better view and we'll have our shot. Look for expressions and gestures. These two shots of a bear walking on the beach were taken less than a second apart. Notice how the image on the right highlights movement better than the image on the left. If an animal is moving, compose your image to leave space in front of that animal. Doing so helps to highlight the movement. One of the most common low-value shots in wildlife photography is of an animal moving or facing away from you. Photographers call them butt shots, and while they can be frustrating, they simply mean we need to work harder. Don't feel bad, I've got butt shots of just about every animal I've ever photographed. To photograph bears and most land-based wildlife, we need a camera with a telephoto lens, which means a lens with magnification. 
I've included links to some recommended gear for wildlife photography in the video notes. Longer lenses are generally heavier and more expensive, but there are many affordable options. In this example, both of these camera systems have an identical amount of reach. In cold temperatures, battery performance declines. Think about starting your car on a freezing winter day. Bring spares and charge them fully, then keep them somewhere accessible and warm like an inside pocket of your jacket. When we photograph most wildlife, the most important camera control we need to set is the shutter speed. We need that shutter speed to be fast enough to capture a large moving animal, and there are a few ways to do this. If you're new to photography and want to keep it simple, look for a sports mode setting on your camera. An even better way is to put your camera into shutter priority mode, which is usually labeled S or TV on the camera dial. Start with a shutter speed of 1 over 1000, and if you need to make it faster, try 1 over 1600 or 1 over 2000. We've been out all day, so we'll head inside to warm up and have dinner. We'll recharge our batteries and rest up for tomorrow. Now that you've learned about technique, composition, and gear, are you ready to find more bears? All right, we're hoping to capture something epic today, and I think we found our moment. A mother is nursing her two cubs. Even among local bear guides, this behavior is not commonly observed, so we're super lucky. Hudson Bay has frozen over and the bears are largely gone. But that's okay, the tundra is home to a number of photogenic mammals and birds. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this Arctic Safari, and if so, please like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and follow on Instagram. Thanks for watching.